there was something that we wanted to ask someone who is like good at at propositional logic about and it's the modus ponens thing guys i can't believe you could if, <laughs> if alex is there he can weigh in on this and perhaps settle the oh. dispute Alex Malpass, I came up with this syllogism. So, Hold say on a hypothetical... yeah, well, I don't know if he's there. Is he, Are you there, Alex? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, we can hear you. So, how about this? Okay. Just present the syllogism, godly, or, sorry, godless, and then ask him if he thinks it's sound. Okay, so in this hypothetical, Darth is in a, in a server, and he doesn't know who the owner of the server is, but he wants to talk to them because he wants to have mods. First one, Darth Hawkins wants to talk to the owner of the server. Premise two, Jack Angstrike is the owner of the server. He wants to talk to Jack Angstrike. Uh-huh. They're in invalid. Oh. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. God damn. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's invalid. Is it, it, no, 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 no. Don't, hey, no, 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 no. Hey, so I don't, we don't want to hear you. We don't want to hear you tell us why. We want to hear Alex okay, okay, okay. tell us why. Well, so an argument's invalid if. Oh, no, you're breaking up, Alex. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, you're breaking yeah, up. It's an you. intermittent thing, but I can hear Sorry, it I'm now. Walking. But the idea is, if the premises can be true and the conclusion can be false, then the argument's invalid. So it means for an argument to be invalid. Oh, so shit. And so you just Wait, the first premise, why can't we say just say the first premise isn't true? Well, then, are you asking whether the argument's valid or whether it's sound? Um. It doesn't matter. Well, let's just talk about validity you, what do you think, because... I'm asking you, what do you think the problem with it is? One of the premises or its validity? I'm saying it's invalid. Right, but uh, but, but the, the person, people are presenting this as modus ponens. No, it's not modus ponens. What do you think the form is? Well, it's... Um, uh, I mean, it's difficult to say it out loud, right? It's a bit like modus ponens, I guess. The second, it relies on substitute um, the server owner for the term Jack Angstreich. But the problem is that the server owner occurs in the context of Darth Dawkins believes that, dot, dot, dot. Right. It's an intentional context. I mean, there's loads of... Uh, let me explain like this. Um, imagine... Darth Dawkins wants to know if Jack Hangstrike is the server owner, right? Uh, and then premise two, um, Jack Hangstrike is the server owner, right? Now, with, if I can substitute the terms Jack Hangstrike and the server owner, then I can get the conclusion Darth Dawkins wants to know if Jack Hangstrike is Jack Hangstrike. But obviously that's not what he's, that's false, right? He doesn't want to know that. He's not questioning the law of identity. Right. right. So that shows you that that type of substitution goes wrong. Right? You can't substitute freely in an intentional context. I mean, there are different ways of showing that, but that's an intuitive way, it seems to me. And if you agree with that, then that's why you can't substitute. And in the second premise, you're getting an identity. Right? Jack Angstrike is the server owner. And it relies on you being able to substitute that, those terms with the identity into the conclusion. So modus ponens doesn't require that type of inference. So in fact, it's a completely different inference to modus ponens. Ah, it uses a, sort of presupposes that you can substitute identity. And you can, but only if it's an extensional context. That's the logician's answer. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. So who was right? Well, Tom, who was the main ones disagreeing with you? Well, I mean, I think both sides were right. There was a little bit of talking past each other, but um, I mean, Shane was just saying like, if this is modus ponens, then it's invalid. Um, the only thing he was slightly wrong about was calling it modus ponens. 
Uh, yeah, Shameless was totally wrong about calling it Modus Ponens, and I was mistaken about it too, listening to Shameless. Mistaken, Ace. You've been calling it modus ponens and saying modus ponens was. Yeah, you invalid. said it was in an article. Yeah, when no, people... no, no, no. Look, look. You guys, you guys are completely mistaken. Wow. Right? So... <laughs> <laughs> you went on a fucking, you went on a fucking crusade to point out how fucking modus ponens is invalid. Well, wait, let's, wait, wait. Let's ask. What let's ask Alex. Let's let's yeah, let's, let's ask that. Right? Let's ask Axel. Uh, Just Alex. look at his look at his Alex. username. Modus Ponens at Okay, so Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Alex. Alex. guys, don't, so, don't it's dishonest. Wait, to wait, like... wait. So look, me me going me going after Modus Ponens after that discussion was look, uh, spurred on by the discussion, but it wasn't matter. about look, that particular discussion. This is silly. Look, let's not let's not have a dis you know let's just if you want an objective response from Alex, just ask him, right? And don't don't fluff him with all this other like extra bullshit. So, um, something that was also in contention, Alex, was whether or not modus ponens is always valid. I just always valid is objectionable. It's like if it it's either valid or not, right? Yeah, that's right. Everything that's valid is always valid. Yeah. Thank you, Jazz. Okay, yeah. so so right. Wait, so the question is, is you guys? Hold on, he didn't answer. Ace. Oh my God. Alex, you've got you. I muted Ace. I can't let him in. I was just gonna right ask. Now. I just wanted to clarify. A question. No, just let him answer. Malpass, Malpass is saying God is his original. Oh, okay. Thank you. I think if I submit the case, my opponent is wrong. Can't hear you, Malpass. Okay, give, give me give me two minutes. Right. I'm gonna switch to my Okay, he's gonna he's gonna set up on his desktop, so so what I heard Alex say was that yes, it is valid, meaning that it's always <laughs> valid, of course. Yes, of course. It's all it means for something to be valid is that it's always valid. Well, I understand look, that. But... Look, you fucking faggots. That's just completely unfair that you fucking muted me right. You were over talking. Matt, I was, are you serious? Being over talk, I was trying to ask Alex, and then all of a sudden you, you were over talking, Alex. Why are you trying to ask? Are you this? No. Are you really this stupid, Ace? You guys are so fucking. Don't engage Ace when he's being like this. Just, I just wanted to ask a clarifying question. He's <clears> saying <throat> Godless's original syllogism is invalid uh -huh. and not in modus ponens form, right? Exactly. But he's, yeah. but he's also saying, right, to sort of vindicate Jovan and myself that anything in modus ponens structure would definitionally be valid correct yeah but we're asking whether or not it's deductively valid not definitionally <laughs> now what are you talking about why don't you ask him he's still in the room we'll, we'll right. get it we'll get to that no we'll he's not he's not he's not he's not tasteless he just they just he's, said he was he's going below to tomer yeah. he, he's yeah, below right. tomer just ask we're asking whether or not it's validly valid rather than invalidly valid. That's no, what we're look, we're talking, Ace, we're talking about validity. Hurt. We're talking about validity, right? So Alex Malpass said that if the premises are true, the conclusion necessarily must be true. That's what do you say, Alex? And that's Alex, the definition what do you of validity. Say about that's that? the definition Let him finish of validity. I was going. Jeez, he's not even here. It's he is down there. Uh, I have a. I have a question. You retard. He's not in the room. We've told you I this a hundred times. He's not. So I, got I have a question. I got vindicated. I have a question for Moses. I am trying to mute him. Because I mean, just when the fucking question. Was... Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. I have a question hey. for Modus Ponens anti-validity. It yeah. is deductively valid, though. Is modus it's just like valid? constructive syllogism. No, not not all expressions in the modus potens form are deductively valid. <laughs> yes, this is, uh, on, this is on... This... Right, so, so I have another follow-up follow, follow question. <laughs> why, why, then, do you think that it's vindication when Malpass says that's I mean, not... That's, like, pretty much the hinge on the door. Stop no, no I'm, vindicated, I'm vindicated because Alex Malpass said that uh, that was committing the intentional fallacy, which, which is exactly what Shamos was pointing out. Now, Shamos was wrong to point out uh, that it was modus ponens. Ace, when you say you're vindicated, nobody was disputing mm -hmm. the initial one. 
What do you mean you're vindicated? No, I was between the accusing and argument. Oh, so, so, the so, intentional so, 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 now, so now you're saying so now you're saying it's trivial that it was committing the intentional fallacy when we had hey, a so fucking you it, bash it, bash it into quiet. your heads for a long time. Everybody that it was quiet. The Everybody quiet. Uh, celebrity in the house. Everybody quiet. <laughs> well, ask so. I think what you're committed to saying is, here's the problem, what you're committed to saying, even though you're trying to like qualify it that say, by saying that modus ponens isn't always valid, it just reduces to you saying modus ponens is invalid. Yeah. Modus ponens is necessarily valid. Yeah. We have mouth pass now. Uh, mouth pass. Uh, like you... said, Wait, stop a, different... stop a, stop a. Does anyone mind? Does anyone well, mind look, if I ask is... a question? I, so, no, just fucking. Can position. we have the one? Yes. Yeah, this is yes, we do. That's what I mean. Like, yes, we do. I'm going to preemptively mute Scup, and like, if everybody else is going to just talk and over, it's like, look, we don't, we don't need all this. Can we just like behave? Yeah, I was gonna. I mean, hi, Malpass. <clears throat> right. What? I don't have very long. What was the? Josh, was ask the question. Me? Only Josh talk. Or how about me? Because it's my position. Hey, stop talking. How well, it's my yeah. position. Is modus ponens deductively valid? Well, I mean, yeah. I think the short answer is yeah, it is, yeah. Well, what do you mean by deductive? So, look, wait, wait, that's not even the question. So, are all arguments in the modus po ponens form deductively valid? Correct. Yes. They are? Not like all this. Yes. Wait, wait, all arguments? Why is anyone talking other than Alex right now? Everyone <laughs> shut up other than Alex. Wait, wait, wait. Al so, Alex, you're saying that all of them are? Modus ponens is a form of argument, right? To say, strictly speaking, saying that it's valid is just to say any argument in that form is valid. Okay, but what, what if I give you an example that's in modus ponens form, the premises are true, but the conclusion is not true? But then it would show you that modus ponens is not valid. Oh, interesting. Go I ahead agree. and give him the example, please. Yeah, yeah. So, um, if if you have these red spots, you have measles. This patient has red spots, thus he has measles. Uh, let me type it out, right? Oh, so it seems like Alex is actually agreeing with me that uh, no, he's not. He's not, he's not agreeing ponens. with you. Well, he he did say that it could possibly be just invalid. Let just let him. Just let him. All let Alex him conceded to was that if you showed him that modus ponens was invalid, it would be invalid. That's all he said, Ace. I don't know what you're interpreting from no, that. No, that a particular argument in modus ponens form would be invalid. Oh, it can be valid but not sound. So this is the argument. Yes. And so the whole point is that abductively that's valid however deductively, deductively that's invalid no, I, I agree with that valid. it's not an abductive argument it, hold on the, the only person that should be wait. talking right now is ace and malpass yeah, it's de it's deductively invalid even though it's abductively valid so you think that it could be true that if this patient has red spots then he has measles and it's true that this patient has red spots, but it's false that he has measles. Yeah, yeah, because those those red spots could be caused by some other disease. All right, a chicken box, maybe. Okay. Premise one is false. Yeah, exactly. The premise one just how is premise it, how is premise one false? Is it possible he has measles? MJ, uh, MJ, MJ, are you serious? No, no. Look, abductively, abductively, it's true. That, that when this patient has measles, yes. they have these red spots. Listen, an abductive argument means an inference to the best explanation. Right? That's not what this argument is. It's not saying um, the best explanation for red spots is uh, the best explanation for red spots is measles. He has red spots, therefore it's measles. Right? That's an abductive argument, and that's not deductively valid. No, no, no. So you're you're that's just you're argument. just no, no, no. So this this is the confusion, right? So when you're working in a computer system that uses abductive logic, you you type it in exactly like that, right? It's it's what's known as defeasible logic. So this is that first, wait wait this wait wait that first premise is defeat is defeasible, right? In abductive premise. logic. 
listen, I mean, look, that's just, it's not, you're not right about that, right? This, <laughs> this is just, it's P then Q, then Q. Is, is, Q therefore Q. Hey, like, can yeah. you write about Malpass a little bit? Come on. Just read about that. Okay, yeah, like I said, in abductive logic, in an abductive logic system, you type in that rule exactly how it's typed in. Maybe slightly very, uh, slight very, very variation for the particular abductive system, but it's typed in exactly like that. And the system will go down through its rules. Each one will fire in sequence, and the ones that fire and and all the premises are true, it will uh, generate the conclusion as one of the possible answers. And so there, it's not it, when you're when you're talking about an abductive logic system, you're not saying for every single rule you're saying uh it is the best possible explanation that if the person has red meat bread dots that if they have measles and and then it is the best explanation that you know you're not this is extraneous superfluous right the the thing is is that there is an equivalent uh version of modus ponens in inductive log logic and abductive logic and they're phrased exactly like this and to appreciate that this is abductively valid you have to appreciate that it's deductively invalid. Well, I agree that an, an argument, an abductive argument, a good abductive argument is deductively invalid, right? But it's just a quibble about the meaning of the term abductive here. That's not an abductive argument, as far as I'm concerned. What are you talking about? That is an abductive argument, right okay, there. But now you need to just be more clear about what you mean by an abductive argument. How What's can we an abductive argument? Can we um like start a pool to see how long it takes Alex to rage? <laughs> yeah, I'm going in about five minutes anyway. But like, without <laughs> a definition of abductive, you're just you're just equivocating. Uh, I don't know what you mean. No, uh, what do you mean? I'm using the commonly accepted term of uh, just reasoning the, the best just reasoning the to the best explanation. So state the definition then. Yeah, reasoning to the best explanation. I mean, okay, Pierce, okay. Pierce, okay. Pierce talked okay. about this years right. ago. I got it, right? So it's reasoning to the best explanation. Now explain to me why that argument counts as reasoning to the best explanation. Well, look, that that uh, set of premises with the conclusion, uh, when you put it in a database, is stated exactly as such. Any abduct, like if you've ever worked with any system of abductive logic, uh, the 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 premises and conclusions are are essentially stated as such. You don't ever preface every single statement in abductive logic with "it is the best possible explanation that." Right? That would just be completely wholly redundant. So, so you, how, how to me, like, what you're how, saying is I'm almost, I'm almost, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. How how modern abductive logic systems work, and you can download them, and they're free to download, is that uh, they start with the strongest assumption, you know, the deductive assumption or the deductive form, and if they and if they invalidate the deductive form, then they weaken it to an inductive form, and if they invalidate the inductive form, then they weaken it further to an abductive form. This is it's it's what's known as uh, basically weakening through failure. Right, you haven't explained to me why the argument that I wrote up there is what you're talking about. What are you talking about? It, it's okay, clearly okay, says, okay, it clearly says, it clearly says that. that an argument, right? Okay, that argument, is that an abductive argument? Uh, it could be phrased abductively. Is, does the form of the argument make it abductive or deductive? I mean, is, is that what, I don't understand. It, well, it's, va it's, it's vague. You could form that as an abductive argument, or you could form that as a deductive argument. The argument I wrote, you think that's, it might not be a deductive argument? Um, it could be both, right? Any anything that holds deductively holds abductively. Anything that holds deductively holds abductively. Um, yeah, the de de deduction is a, is a, a ha has a smaller set of premises that it can conclude as 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 true. 
and and all and all uh, conclusions concluded by deductive logic are are are, are deduct there are uh, concluded by inductive logic and are concluded by abductive logic. Yeah, this is this is all trivial. Yeah, I actually don't agree with um, because okay, well you'd have to show a counter. He's explaining that right? right now. If you don't interrupt him, yeah, you need a counter example. Don't interrupt. Go ahead, Matt. So. I think Gettier cases, right, where you could have so you could have something that's logically uh, entailed by something that you know, which isn't something that you know, right? Um, and that would mean that for you it wouldn't be a good explanation because it would be something completely unknown to you, like the case where. Um, What's the Gettier case where the guy who offers you the job has a coin in his pocket or whatever? Yeah. Um, so y your intentional states are not um, closed under logical deduction, right? So it feels like there has to be a distinction between an abductive argument that appeals to... Sure. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to put you on the spot, Alex. Um, I'll. I'll think about it as well. Like I said, I think that all arguments that deductively hold also abductively hold. I don't. I don't think that there's a counterexample to that. I could be wrong. I'd love to see a counterexample, but um, otherwise we can just leave it at that if you want. Yeah, but I mean, basically, you can make this a lot more complicated than it needs to be. Um. In propositional logic, right, which is, a, I hope you'll agree, a form of deductive logic, right? The, ar the argument that yeah. I wrote to begin with about measles or whatever just translates as modus ponens. So it's a deductive argument, right? So it is deductively valid. I mean... No, it's in the, it's in the modus ponens form, but it's deductively invalid because it doesn't follow from the premises. I agree that the form the form is valid, but the conclusion it doesn't follow from the premises. Well, what's the what's the? I mean, I mean that I don't understand, right? But what I'm trying to understand is what's the model that makes the premises true and the conclusion false. If you could show me that, then we would have. But it, I mean, the thing is, it does it doesn't it doesn't work. I mean, the definition, right? Like, if that's, well, look, that, that's the whole point. That's, like the, that's the whole premise. point. Let me just say this because then I'm going to go, right? The first premise is if P, then Q, right? In propositional logic, that statement's true unless the antecedent is true and the conclusion is false, right? So if we're saying that the um, first premise is true, right? Then it's not the case that the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. And then the second premise says that the antecedent is true. Right? So we've already said it's not the case that the antecedent is true and the consequent is false, and we're saying that the antecedent is true. Therefore, it follows that the consequent is also true. Right? So you've already committed to the consequent being true by the first premise and the second premise. That's why it's deductively valid. So you're not going to come up with an argument. You could say that the if-then means something different because actually it's an appeal that's exactly, to... That's exactly it, actually. Right, it, it, is, we, it is the okay. if-then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Malpass. Let Malpass finish. Only if you read the first premise to mean something different, then you can make that argument. But yeah, that's, that's just to say that it's not an instant. No, no, no. So this is this is the way. common this is the common confusion in uh, logic right now. That's that's very common, uh, which is that there there are actually uh, three forms of conditionals. There's a deductive conditional, an inductive conditional, and abductive conditional. And there's yeah, and modus ponens only uses modus, material. Wait, 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 Alex, Alex. So yeah, and, and and so there's three forms of modus ponens. And the thing is, is to appreciate the the fact that that uh, statement is abductively valid, you have to also appreciate the fact that that statement is deductively invalid. So by the, by the term modus ponens, you mean an argument that can have maybe a subjunctive conditional as the first premise. And that's okay. No, I mean, you can use the, about the form to mean that, but that's not what, like, that's certainly, certainly not what I mean when I say modus ponens is valid. So it's just an equivocation of terms then. You're saying modus ponens includes a type of argument that I don't think it includes. 
So we're not really disagreeing with each other. I don't. I don't think I'm saying. I don't think I'm saying that in the slightest. No, I don't think I'm saying that in the slightest. Well, if you agree, so let me explain what I mean by modus ponens. It's an argument that has a material conditional as a first premise, not what you mean, whatever an, an abductive conditional is. It doesn't have a different type of conditional. There's a material condition. I just gave you the definition of that. So truth functional, it's, it's defined in terms of the, the patterns of truth values that its atomic, atomic parts take, and that's it. So that you can't say, well, but it also means something else. In, that's not what it means, right? It's how it's defined in propositional logic. And if you mean something else, then you're talking about something else, right? If you mean what I mean by it, then it isn't a counterexample. It is modus ponens and it is valid. I mean, well, it's, look, the, it's it, it's in the modus ponens form, but if we're going by the definition of validity, where all the premises are true, thus the conclusion is necessarily true, then that's clearly invalid. It being in the modus ponens form includes that the what the form means is that the first premise is a material conditional and not a whatever an abductive conditional is, or let's say a subjunctive conditional or anything else. It, if it has a different type of conditional, it's not in the modus ponens form. So when I'm saying any argument in that form, I mean to exclude an argument that has a different type of conditional as its first premise. And if you want to use the word in the same way as me, then that's what, it, that's what I mean. That's what a logic textbook means. It's what propositional logic textbook means. Like, like I said, I, I think that it's very common in logic. Yeah, well, look, I think it's very common in logic for people to overly focus on uh, these kinds of uh, universal qualifications, these kind of universal uh, uh, conditionals and these kinds of universal uh, inferences. And the, the thing is, is that the majority of statements that are spoken in natural language, such as this one, are not uh, universal or deductive in the sense that most philosophers uh, think about. And the thing is, is that from our uh, research in abductive reasoning systems, where we've actually implemented these things on computers, and, uh, and, and actually making them work in the real world, and not just in some laboratory, uh, we found that uh, this kind of logic is based on what's known as de defeasible logic, right? Or uh, an ab abductive logic is a form of defeasible logic. Okay, so look, I just want to pause for a second, right? Like, wait, 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 wait. I just, whatever. Well, Alex, like, I think you should go. talking about computers as if, like, they, <laughs> they just use the type of argument that you're using. But, I mean, like, Excel, for fuck's sake, is programmed with, with propositional logic at its core, right? The programming, well, it's first order logic, right? But it, it has modus ponens as I'm defining it, is part of the core program to it. So it's fine. Of course, there are other types of ways that you can program computers, but the, you don't get to just own all computers and say, well, that means computers work like this. They don't, they don't work. There's fucking loads of ways you can no, program I, computers. Look, I, I, I know how computers work pretty, pretty well, Malpass. Okay, but great. The, well the problem, done. I, that doesn't okay, mean look, that, the problem. Wait, wait. But the problem mean? is right. The problem is, is that when you set out to uh, implement an abductive logic system, not just Excel, which just uses really basic, uh, as you said, propositional logic. It's not even first order. It's just propositional. Um, then the thing is, is that you, you, you use this notion of of uh, weakening as failure, where uh, you take a statement and you try to interpret it. Uh, in the most strongest form, so, such as deductively. And then when you find out that it's deductively invalid, then you reinterpret that form as a weaker as a weaker statement, say inductively. And then if you find out that that's invalid, then you reinterpret it again abductively. So there's the thing is is that there is this equivocation on uh, conditionals. There's this equivocation on uh, specific logical forms, such as modus ponens, uh, that all of these forms are collapsed into one deductive form, when that's that's actually not the case. Uh, in, in these practical systems that actually do the kinds of reasoning that we, we would like and are more human-like, uh, they have uh, basically a repetition. They have a, a copying of these logical forms, of these conditionals, for all three forms of logic. So it, th that's okay. that's the problem is that most most philosophers and most logicians tend to equivocate on these different forms. 
Well, listen, I'm not equivocating on those forms because what I'm sa- I was very, very clear about exactly the meaning that I gave. And I didn't say modus ponens has different meanings. Actually, it seems to me like you're the one saying that it means different things. Um, in no, a, no, it's not what I'm saying. But let's, just put that to one, let's just put that to one side, right? Let's say, great, there are computer programs that work in the way that you suggest. I think mean, that's cool. I mean, I, I, I'm not saying that that doesn't happen. I'm not saying, I'm not, like, nothing I'm saying is contradicting that, right? All I'm saying is that very, very, you know, in a very minimal setting, right? Modus ponens is just a term of art that's used to mean a specific thing, right? And it can mean, uh, it, it, and I, I gave you the, the, the meaning that's, that's in logic and classical logic, the, the one that philosophers use when they're making arguments. And if you're saying that term of art is appropriated and also used in computer science to, to refer to other types of argument that are similar, that's slightly different, and that you've got to admit it is different if the conditional is different in the other types of modus ponens that you're talking about. And that's fine. It's expanding the term to mean something as no, well. Not, no, 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 not at all. That's not what I'm doing in the slightest. No, what I'm doing is is that um, what the philosophers mistakenly do is elevate the deductive forms of modus ponens. Because you know, I'm not saying that there's different variations of modus ponens. They, that wouldn't be modus ponens anymore. But that you did modus say po- different variations. No, no. Well, look, what I'm getting at is that modus po- there are, there is an a deductive <laughs> version there's so you can you know modus ponens is just the form p therefore q p uh, p q if p p therefore q right that's that's modus ponens and and so there there are instances of modus ponens i'd like your, to say something co- after this copied, yeah it's copied in these different logics so there's an abductive variant of modus ponens it's still modus ponens but it uses uh abductive implication and abductive conditionals right same thing with the deductive right you I just, just said i'd like to ask and, and so and so this well there's a lot to be said go ahead go ahead seth um are you so are you, you seem to be saying